For anyone who's watched a little Bri Bri Stelter at CNN over the years, it's hard to imagine why anyone would give him a job or keep him on any sort of payroll. The fact that CNN has for so long says how little their news media coverage is worth and how much of a financial hit America's corporations are willing to take year in and year out just to spread the nonsensical narrative they spew in hopes of keeping power in all the right hands. But Jeff Zucker is gone now, and the new Discovery owners allegedly want to take CNN back to their news roots and limit the opinion content. So obviously that's not good news for someone like Little Bri Bri Stelter whose whole shtick isn't reporting the news, it's just basically attacking Fox News. On Friday, Stelter reached all new heights of bootlicking, being a shill to defend White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki after she attacked Fox News reporter Peter Ducey. Jen claimed that Fox fed Ducey questions to ask Psaki and that, quote, might make anyone sound like a stupid son of a bitch, unquote. Little Bri Bri dared to say that she didn't, quote, criticize him directly. Not only that, he didn't criticize her attacks on the press or their right to ask questions. But as always, if it had been the Trump administration, we never would have heard the end of it out of little Bri Bri. We, of course, would have heard how the press was being threatened and how the end of democracy was nigh. But little Bri Bri has always been a go-to for content. He's been a nightmare for years. Recently, he got nailed for it in a glorious moment by a young student reporter at the Chicago Thinker during a disinformation conference that Stelter was speaking at. Irony of all ironies. This, of course, didn't get past Tucker Carlson. The student, Chris Phillips, told Tucker about the incident. Here's the clip. So, from our irony files, this is like one of the greatest stories ever. So, the University of Chicago's Institute of Politics and the Atlantic Magazine just hosted a conference, no self-awareness whatsoever, entitled Disinformation and the Erosion of Democracy. So they say they invited all of your favorite purveyors of disinformation and exponents of censorship, Barack Obama, Jonah Goldberg, and Applebaum, and of course, Brian Stelter. There was no IQ bar, apparently. What the speakers didn't count on, the expected hours of just bloviating, is that there are still a couple of kids at the University of Chicago who are awake enough to say, wait a second, what are you talking about? Disinformation? Here's one exchange. You've all spoken extensively about Fox News being a purveyor of uh, disinformation, uh, but CNN is right up there with them. They push the Russian collusion hoax. They push the Jesse Smollett hoax. They smeared Justice Kavanaugh as a rapist, and they also smeared Nick Sandman as a white supremacist. And yes, they dismissed the Hunter Biden laptop affair as pure Russian disinformation. All the mistakes of the mainstream media, and CNN in particular, seem to magically all go in one direction. Are we expected to believe that this is all just some sort of random coincidence or is there something else behind it? I think you're describing a different channel than the one that I watch. Uh, but I understand that that is a popular right-wing narrative about CNN. <laughs> it's a popular right-wing narrative. <laughs> Never trust anyone who uses the term narrative, by the way, just for the record. Christopher Phillips is the man you saw in that clip. He's a freshman at the University of Chicago. He joins us tonight. Mr. Phillips, thank you for joining us. What possessed you to confront these purveyors of disinformation? Hi, Tucker. Thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor. Uh, you know, the, uh, the way I've always been is to uh, search for truth and ask questions to, uh, you know, sift through the lies and um, find out what's really going on. So uh, myself and two of my colleagues at the Chicago Thinker, the uh, University of Chicago's premier publication, uh, Evita Duffy and Daniel Schmidt, we three went to this conference and, uh, you know, we see right when we come in uh, a ton of people, a ton of legacy media employees whose uh, entire careers have been uh, spreading disinformation. Those are the people who are telling us about how to avoid disinformation. So, uh, you know, I hear Brian Stelter and he talks for 30 minutes about how Fox News is this huge purveyor of disinformation. They're the enemy of the people. And then I come up and I say, wait a second, run that back because actually CNN, uh, from my, what I've seen at least, uh, is probably 10 times the purveyor of disinformation that uh, you claim Fox News to be. And, uh, you know, he didn't really have a great answer for it. Well, I just, it, you know, some of the examples that you threw at him, you know, are subjective. I agreed with your, with your take on it. But some of them were just objective. Like CNN did dismiss Hunter Biden's laptop as Russian disinformation. That kid's on camera doing it. 
wouldn't it have been better if he would have said, yeah, we got, you know, I got that wrong. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Wouldn't that have worked? Gosh, I mean, you know, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I didn't exactly expect him to hand over the keys and say, you know what, we're corrupt. Go ahead, Chris, and uh, make CNN the truth. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I did, uh, I did kind of expect him to say, you know, we uh, retracted those stories and we apologize uh, for, right. for saying that. And we always, uh, you know, keep a clean, we try to keep a clean record. But there was no apology. There was no remorse whatsoever. It's just, uh, you know, I don't know what news network you're talking about. That's not mine. When in reality, he said these things on CNN. It's all documented. Yeah, it's it's hard to have credibility if you if you won't admit that you make a mistake ever. You know, everybody right. makes mistakes. We certainly have, but just admit it. So, what was the reaction from other students at Chicago to to your question? Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, social pressure to uh, conform to the leftist narrative, to conform to the radical agenda yep. at uh, college campuses. Uh, so, uh, just working for uh, the Chicago Thinker. Uh, really is, um, you know, kind of inviting you to be canceled in a sense. But a lot of people, I have to say, actually really liked my question. They thought it was fair. Uh, they thought it was honest. And it, it was um, pure journalism. And I respect everyone who, who told me that. Some people were not satisfied with it. But uh, regardless, you know, I think I, think I did a good thing in uh, asking Brian, you know, what gives as to uh, CNN's bias? Yeah. And just like, I don't, just touch reality once a day. You know, reassure us that you're, you're not like demented, but he didn't. Chris Phillips from University of Chicago, a, a, a credit to your generation. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much, Tucker. And everyone needs to check out thechicagothinker.com. Right now, we publish a lot of stuff on campus craziness. Uh, we're, no one else is doing it like we are. So hit us on Twitter and Instagram as well. Hit me at Chris P. The Truth for more. I looked at it this morning. It's good. Chris Phillips, thank you. But now there's word that Stelter's days at CNN may be numbered. Oh, no. John Nicosia tweeted out, Sources, Brian Stelter's days are numbered with the network. Discovery Management very much considers him a Zucker henchman and embarrassment and believes he is a negative partisan lightning rod and distraction going forward. More to come. What a feel-good moment. It seems the long arm of karma might finally be dropping on this character. There are few people in media in any position who more deserve the axe than Stelter. And if or when they do dump him, who in the hell is going to hire this man for anything? His opinions are severely limited, along with his intellect. Where's he going to run? MSNBC, the future home of Jen Psaki? No, 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 I'll do you one better. He needs to be the replacement for Pisaki at the White House. There we go. That's the ticket. He's such a DNC operative, that would be the perfect fit. He's already not trusted by anyone, so he'd just go from one non-trusted position to another, just being more open about being a Democrat shill. And I would bet you dollars to donuts, eventually Ducey would have him crying on national television. At this point, it's not like CNN doesn't have enough to deal with, like managing the shit show that is their new streaming service, CNN+. Plus. And just a little side note or an update. It seems Chris Wallace isn't feeling so bueno about his career choices lately. He's basically shitting himself, realizing he made the worst move in news media history, averaging about 10,000 subscribers now with the whole CNN Plus streaming service. Well, these jokes... They kind of write themselves now, don't they? Honestly, it may be too late to save the network given everything Zucker did to sink it. But if they cut the dead wood or fat like Brian Stelter, they can only go up from there. You know, folks, in a weird way, I almost hate to see the little bald fat guy go. Now, hear me out. Think about it. How many bonehead, arrogant, low IQ gaffes have we missed out on? due to Meathead Cuomo getting fired. What's next? Don Lamont? Joy Reid? You know, then again, I think with the fat bald guy gone, the world would be a much better place now, wouldn't it? Most of this came by way of redstate.com. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.